What's going on YouTube? This is your Melanated Warrior, Hey Ru Heinous, and this is another installment of Facts Over Feelings. Leave your feelings at the door so we can get to the facts. We're right back at it. We got another powerful segment. This segment is for those, this is who I'm doing it for, those who have been inquiring, who who really rock with the FOF squad, and I, I wanted to keep you updated. I know you guys wanted to know what the status was on the website and whether or not it's been completed. Uh, it just, you know, I don't think it's going to be done anytime soon, to be perfectly honest with you guys. I mean, I have a lot going on. I mean, you guys know uh, 12 hours of my day, this is to help build, you know, the business that I've been putting a lot of time and energy and resources into. And then I also took a third shift gig. So that's, you know, from 10 at night, dang near to, you know, 3, 4 in the morning. I, I get like 3, 4 hours of sleep and then that schedule varies. So, but, you know, it's, it, it stays at night. That's the good thing about it. Um, so, but it still takes up a considerable amount of my time. That's one of the reasons why I outsource uh, with those brothers in order to get the website done. And, I, you know, they just kind of quit on me uh, for some odd reason. And then I tried to allocate some time to go down to the libraries. My schedule just wasn't really matching up. I was just exhausted and I just really couldn't get it done. Um, and I'm not going to hold you up. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't have the enthusiasm uh, as well, you know, because as any business does, you have to look at the numbers. One of the things that, one of the projects that I used to kind of gauge, you know, the success of the website was the, the, the success there, you know, of the book or the lack thereof, you know, um, as you guys know, uh, I released a book in August called The Untold Story of the Carbon Baby, you know, you guys can still go check that out and get it off of Amazon. Um, and that carbon is spelled with a K, so the untold story of the carbon baby. And, you know, out of 5,000 subs, I think I sold a little over 400 books. Now, I know a lot of our people aren't big fans of reading, but I mean, damn, you know, what I'm saying? I was just like, you know, that doesn't really pump you up to start a website, you know, and you'll get four or five people here and there. But for the amount of content that you have to put, the amount of time that you have to put into a website and, you know, it's just... I mean, I've come to the conclusion, which is just, it's crazy because ironically enough, like we said, I've done segments on this, you know, our people are consumers and we spend almost $1.4 trillion a year, but yet we complain that we don't have any wealth and we're not generating, um, we're not, gen you know, helping each other to build wealth. And this is just what's so insane about it. Like we don't care, uh, you know, or mind that we are sending these crackers babies to college and, and not to say that their education or their, you know, is going to help them that, you know, because if they can't convince you to spend dollars, it don't matter how intelligent they are, you know? So it's just, it, that's the whole thing about the culture. They are driving us to spend money with them. This is one of the reasons why you see content creators happen to come back or for they're forced back to YouTube or forced back to, TikTok or force back to Facebook because niggas don't want to support other, you know, we just don't want to support each other. We just don't want to do it. And, and, and that's just the way that it is, man. That's just how sick things are in the last. This is why they call it the last days. And I don't, you know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I don't think that the wheel will be reinvented anytime soon. I, I just don't think that it will be. Uh, you know, I, the reason why I do this, obviously, because I am filled with the most highest energy. But first and foremost, even if that was excluded, the my main concern is that my son, Zion, really sees that his, his dad was fighting for the cause. That's really, truly important to me because I understand what the fight is really, truly all about. I know that if I know thyself, I would discover all the mysteries of the universe. That's something that nobody can give me but me that's an individual journey you see what i'm saying and real talk niggas like free shit <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you know i can get people to listen to me i guess all day and i you know i understand you know people say you got a charismatic personality you, you know i mean you got a lot of charisma uh you know you can relay information easy and then i have articles that we're going to delve into a little later on to where we really have to put a lot of of, 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 you know, emphasis on uh, uh, understanding that only our people can teach our people. Real shit, not just in the fact that off is black is black, that's what makes it right. No, like our people have the ability to relay the information in a way in which it is understandable to our people. That's a culture. Blancos can be in school listening to boring shit. All oh, the year is 1945 and the the world war ii is over they can listen to that garbage and then be like oh my god yeah you know that was exciting that was exhilarating oh heart pounding <laughs> niggas be in there can you you know as soon as we see black and white we <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you can't make that shit entertaining at us but if you put us on say just like, this is one of the reasons like why you can have a black pastor he can preach for about two hours ain't quoted one scripture 
but got the but got the whole congregation uh you know involved all because of his you, you know his his personality the energy that he's bringing uh uh you know and yet there's just not the same and they know that and we're going to go into some articles that are really going to open your eyes on that we're going to touch on a lot of subjects and i hope you guys you know share these videos uh you know we're going to keep this up because like i said before i mean just I can't reinvent the wheel. Obviously, Hey Rude doesn't have that type of power yet. It's nothing that I can do. I don't really think that the Carbon Baby website is going to change the world at this moment in time. And I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just being realistic. Niggas like free shit. <laughs> we just, for some odd reason, have been indoctrinated to the point where we don't want to support each other to that point. We don't, we don't mind the fact that we have been knowledgeable of our spending habits. $1.4 trillion a year. We know that. But we know that it's not going to each other. So a lot of times people say, oh, well, yeah, you know, you could do it on your own. And I've done a lot of stuff on my own. Trust me. But this is what we're talking about. Social currency, like W.E.B. Du Bois pointed out. We want to exchange ideas and resources at the same time. We want to be producers and consumers. Right. So it's even though I'm capable of doing something, I don't mind sharing the wealth and somebody else being associated with that project, especially if that project is associated with success. OK, so it's just like, you know, if you got musicians, they do music. They don't they just don't want to do music with themselves. They do music with other musicians. They spread the love. Um, you know, that's that's kind of like how you want to do it. I you know, I love to in, in, you know engage with individuals and, and see them shine at what they do. I just love it, especially other black people. I, I, I love it, you know, and, and, and yet, um, you know, it's just it's just not possible at this time. Like I said, with my work schedule and then me doubling down on this third shift job that I took as recently, uh, I just don't have the time. I really don't, brothers and sisters. So I know that that may hope you know that may be disappointing news to others. That may be good news to others that they can just sit up here and then just hear me rant and rave for free. So <laughs> either way, either way you take it, I don't know. Good news, bad news, just is what it is. So we're gonna move on. We're gonna get off into some information, and I think that is really going to be eye opening and soul stirring and and jarring to say the least but for some it's just probably gonna be like oh well it just is what it is and they're probably gonna continue to keep moving the way that they've been moving this whole time some they just can't be moved all right some have just been indoctrinated to the point to whereas uh you, you know they cannot be convinced that these things have not been planned out for a very long time and we've heard about the you know king alfred plan we've heard about all these plans uh of that you know um have been in you know set into motion uh 20 25 years ago and even with what i'm about to you know disclose to you guys the information that i'm about to disclose in this segment you know i would even go as to say it's been the nature of this beast since they stepped on this land that has been biological and chemical warfare and i've always said that typhus syphilis uh you know um every disease that you know can, that can be named european history books have already said that it has been endemic to the european population that the natives have never seen diseases like these until you ran into the european ever so how all of a sudden are they doing you a favor? Like I said before, it's almost like somebody comes start a fire, but then they bring the water and then all of a sudden they're the heroes because they bring the water. Did you forget they started the fire? That's the only thing that I'm trying to get my people to understand. You forgot they started the fire. These diseased ass people with a diseased ass curriculum. I can't even get nobody to debate me. Why? Because they get embarrassed. They get embarrassed. That's what they will. Yeah, 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 they will. They get embarrassed because they know I play no games. Now, let's go off into it because I want to talk about this movie. Now, remember, we talk about the world is being ruled and always will be ruled by signs and symbols. And people are, sim that are symbols themselves, too, as well. Now, one of the most iconic characters in Hollywood, especially uh, right now in the date because of the movie that just came out, Matrix Re uh, Resurrections, is Keanu Reeves. Now, the thing is, is that you always know that they have to put these people in view that where they've used them as representations of esoteric messages that they convey through movies programs and and and, and you know uh iconography all right now it's interesting to note that when they did an article on him the movie that they showed which they said catapulted him to success 
Now it was in this article. I can't, you know, I was trying to look for the article, but I remember that this is one one thing that encouraged me to do this 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 segment, and that's why I I really thought that I had screenshotted that article. But they used they didn't use Constantine, they didn't use the Matrix, uh, any of the, the the movies from the Matrix series. Uh, uh, even this movie that just came out on Netflix as of recently, where he was a parent and his uh, I think his his wife and his children died, then he ended up cloning them or something like that. Um, they used the movie Johnny Mnemonic. Now Johnny Mnemonic came out in 1995. Now the reason why you know that the elite used this movie because they were telling you to go back and look. So of course you know what Heyru did. Heyru went even before. That's why I say. I, I must be traveling at light speed because I watched the movie before this article had even popped up. As of recently, some told me to go delve back in the movie because I remember when I was young, I hated the movie. I was like, man, this movie didn't make no sense because I was always off into what they termed to be sci-fi, right? And um, hold on for one second. Give me one second. Okay, sci-fi, right? And so... The movie kind of threw me off because I was like, oh, man, he's, he went here, his, his brain was hurting, and he went and he was talking to a dolphin. Like, crazy shit, okay? But now that I know what was going on, the movie still was trash to me. It was trash, but because the message that it was relaying to you to let you know, oh, we we showed you that we had this 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 plan 25 to 30 years ago this specific set of events not just the overall game plan because we already know that we know that that's been in, in in play for hundreds or if not thousands of years right but we're talking about this specific set of events now i always encourage you guys to take a look at the movies and the programs and read the articles that i recommend not just because i'm just trying to fill your head over anything because i really feel like it should resonate with you and that, that you know some very powerful stuff in there that you can present to other people as well because they want you to be able to provide the evidence right so it's not a waste of time so when i tell you to look at these things i really need you to do that but let's just say for instance that you don't we're going to do some of the work for you we're going to simplify this so but if you can, and if you want to, just to check and to verify what I'm saying to be true, just take a look at the intro or the the beginning credits to the movie Johnny Mnemonic. And this is how it starts off. I can't bullshit you this. I, I just, I, I can't make this up. You can't make this up. It literally, the movie literally starts off and says, the year is 2021 and there is a pandemic on the earth. Did you hear what I said, brothers and sisters? The year is 2021, and there is a pandemic on the earth. Now, what happens is Johnny Mnemonic is one of these a group of elite agents that they use in order to transport sensitive corporate information. OK, so they put these microchips in their brain and they upload sensitive corporate data. And they use these elite agents to transport this data to de destinations uh, so that, you know, to prevent corporate espionage and all of this, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. So the thing is, what he happens to do is take on this task where he, you know, is uploading some sensitive data, but it's a heavy upload. Now, this is one of the reasons why I have a problem with this, because even modern science will tell you is that the brain technically has an unlimited amount. Of, they don't even know how much the brain can store. Right. So it's, it's like for him to have to erase his childhood in order to upload or create more or storage uh, 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 capacity is just, you know, ludicrous. But let's just go with the narrative that the movie is is putting forth, right? So he has to delete most of his information and his, his memories in order to upload uh, this information uh, from this pharmaceutical company, which contains the cure for the disease known as the Black Shakes. Now, this is interesting because the name of the plague in the movie is NAS, which is Neural Attenuation Syndrome. Neural, we know, is neurons in the brain. Attenuation means to weak, so weak brain cells, and it gives you the Black Shakes. Pause. One of the things that makes us discontent, because a lot of you people may not subscribe to this, but you know Hey Ru does, because black is not just a color, black is an energy source. So that's why I hate when you hear negative connotations associated with the color black or the term black, however you want to characterize it. But the fact of the matter is, that's what they tend to do. So the black shakes uh, cause people, you know, obviously, you know, with the black, you know, you're shaking, uh, you know, because the, the, the brain is basically breaking down or shutting down, okay? Uh, so, you know, there's another subliminal message that it will affect the brain eventually. So they're letting you know what's going on with that. Now, interestingly enough, he runs into the leader of these, uh, you know, underground organization called the Lotex, which is ran by this character called T-Bone or J-Bone, I think it is. And that, that character is played by Ice-T. Now, 
this is what's really crazy is that Ice T has this uh, in, you, you know, image on his forehead, uh, which is the A inside of the circle. Now we know that to be anarchy is the new order. That's what that symbol means. Now, interestingly enough, that is a symbol that is used by Antifa. So not only do you have a, a pandemic going on in 2021, you also have, uh, uh, you know, a group that uses the same uh, political uh, uh, um, ID or, you know, insignia, uh, if you will, uh, or image uh, uh, for their group uh, during this same time, too, as well. Now, he runs into the doctor, the first doctor he runs into, which is, the, you know, she, he, he uh, is uh, recommended to him by this bodyguard, this girl, female bodyguard that takes up, you know, protecting him as he's trying to get this information out of his head. Right. And he asks me, says, oh, well, you know, what is this black shakes? What's the source of it? And so and so the doctor tells me, said, now, mind you, it's 2021. So he's pointing to the technology all around him. He says, it's this, it's that we become over reliant on this stuff he said we can't you know there's nothing that you know we can't live without this stuff now check you have to understand this understand this movie came out in 1995 i don't you know i i, I have to go back and do some research but as far as i think i can remember what what was going on in 1995 as far as technology what we had nintendo super nintendo sega probably <laughs> how many people had the internet in their homes not not us we didn't even have a computer you see what I'm saying? So think about what they were saying. What's so powerful is that somebody could sit up there and say, well, okay, yeah, they, they may have been, you know, you know, there's a lot of end of the world scenarios. So, you know, they could have been just throwing it out there that it was going to be a pandemic. There could have been a nuclear, uh, nuclear devastation or et cetera, or earthquakes or blah, 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 you know, but to sit up there and say that there would be an over-reliance and we were addicted to this, this technology and that it was making us sick. This is one of the reasons why that movie flew over everybody's head because in 1995, the average person didn't have a cell phone. It was beepers back then. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? That That is predictive programming at its finest. That is showing you exactly what the fuck they knew what was there. They knew what was gonna happen because they planned it to the T. You see what I'm saying? So this is where you have to. Then so he goes. So the second doctor that he goes to see is, uh, uh, you know, not even human. It's a dolphin. <laughs> that was shit, that's why the shit got weird when I was, I was like, what the fuck is going on? It's a dolphin. But this is what's deep. So the dolphin helps him to get extract the information out of his head because the dolphin is spitting back holographic images to him. Now, this is what's cold. If you go up and you look on uh, up articles about dolphins, dolphins, obviously, we know, and a lot of people understand this, they communicate through something called echolocation or what they term as being sonar. Sonar is an acronym for uh, sound. Um, I believe it's, yeah, uh, yeah, sound ranging uh, uh, no sound navigation and ranging sound navigation and ranging that's what's on there so sorry I forgot about that I had to remember what that was it's been a minute okay so but they use echolocation right so they bounce sound off because sound travels farther than light and radar underwater did you know that okay so when the dolphin bounces sound off of an object the sound come back. The sound comes back to the dolphin, and it's, and it's able to determine the size, the weight, and the shape of the object. Now, this is deep. Now, scientists are like, well, we may even theorize that dolphins. Now, this is like a, I believe I read this article. It was something. I think it was like a 2020 article, a 2019 article. And it was like, oh well, you, we we may even believe that they may uh, see things holographically. Well, bitch, yeah, of course. Because at night when there's no sun, how the fuck is they seeing the size, weight, and the shape? How are they determining this at, at, at night underwater? Okay, so they have these nasal sacs in their frontal lobe. And, you know, like I said, they communicate through clicks and whistles. And then they, they use this to communicate with their young. And like I said, they, they bounce sound off of objects in order to determine the size, the weight, and the shape of, of the objects that they, they find themselves in the contact with. So this is what's so incredible about all this is that they were showing you before, you know, a, a while back, you know, uh, and they were using a dolphin uh, also to let you know that in order to get inside the brain, that apart from what, what you find going on in, in terms of the pandemic, in order to get inside the brain, you would have to use sound. 
you would have to use silence. And this is deep, brothers and sisters. Because, see, what you have to understand is, remember, they are always how you paying attention to your five senses. All right? Now, one of your senses called hearing, vibrations have to touch the ear in order for you to hear. It's what they tell you. But yet, when you sleep, you can hear whole conversations. You could be talking to somebody. Yeah, I was talking to somebody. Somebody said, how do you know? How could you hear what the fuck they said? Music could be playing in your dream. And I'm not talking about lucid dreaming where it was radio or, so, you know, could be playing a song or you left the stereo on or something like that. No, I'm talking about you went to sleep. It was perfectly quiet. And you had a dream where music was playing. You probably was at a party or you had a dream where you was in traffic and you heard cars rumbling. Like, get the fuck. How is your body generating sound without vibrations touching your ear? This is deep. Just like now, you can be quiet and hear your voice in your head. Nobody else can hear it. The person next to you can't hear the voice in your head. And that is not a vibration touching your ear in order for you to hear that. So this is where we're going with how you penetrate the deep recesses of dark matter. Same way a dolphin does it underwater. Check. Oh, see, we, look, see, and then... <laughs> And that y'all didn't want to give a couple of dollars for this shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, hey, Rude, look, listen. Because a lot of us try to discourage each other. It's like, oh, well, all brothers doing is talking on YouTube. That's all these crackers is doing. Remember, like you said, we live in the era that where the pen is mightier than the sword. Now, what precedes the pen? Isn't it thought? Don't you think before you write some shit down? Don't get mad because we thinking. They want you to stop thinking too? Oh, see, that's when you know what time it is. When niggas want you to stop thinking, oh, brothers are doing this thing. No, we cannot even organize before we have the right things in place. We cannot, you, if you ain't got thinkers, if you ain't got individuals who are willing and ready to take the bull by the horns in terms of, uh, of, of, of being able to exercise high analytical skills, uh, 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 you know, to, so that we can come out with the best, the best solutions, uh, uh, you know, then then it's not going to get done because a lot of us we we want to sidestep that we want shortcuts. You can't. We got you really got to aggressively attack that. It's got to be some people who are, who are your think tanks. You got to have those in order to get the job done. Otherwise, I mean, it's all is lost. You just can't go in there wailing and flinging because this is a thing. I'm, I'm gonna give you an example of this. We want superhero abilities when we haven't been training. It's almost like. You want to be able to step in the ring with Floyd and you've been a couch potato your whole life. How is that even possible? These European powers have been in the ring training before you were here. So if you've been sitting on your ass half the time, how much catching up do you think you have to do? How much training do you think that you have to do? Do you think that sulking and crying about it is going to help you? Huh? Do you think that thinking about working out is going to help you mentally, spiritually, and physically? No, that's not going to be the case. Now, I wanted to go off and, uh, like I said, I wanted to read a couple articles because I, I really think that this is important because, you know, we have some issues. You know, one of the things is, is that, you know, first, uh, you know, I wanted to go off into, um, um, now this is important. I thought that this was really important, you know when I saw this because this just came uh, this article just came out today and I thought this was extremely important because this is what they're able to do see like it's a totally different standard for them and even though I mean and they're showing you where they're going with this so I just wanted to show you this article show you this article right here alright and it says Whitmer isolating after husband tests positive for COVID-19 alright I didn't even want to say that, but I mean, it just is what it is because that's what the article says. And I'm going to just tell you what they're able to do. It says the governor has who has no symptoms, had a negative rapid test Tuesday and is awaiting the results of a PCR test out of an abundance of caution. A spokesperson says here is a full statement from the governor's office. Today, the first gentleman tested positive for blah, blah, blah after feeling under the weather. After the positive test, Governor Whitmer took a rapid test, which came back negative and is awaiting the results of a PCR test out of an abundance of caution. Like so many families around the country, the governor and her husband took extra precautions to limit contact with others to stay safe over the holidays as they celebrated Christmas. And this is the same dude who, you know, 
uh, when they were telling people that they couldn't during the height of the pandemic in 2020, they were telling people that they couldn't boat or anything like that. He took his boat out on the lake and all it. I mean, so I mean, come on now. But anyways, it says, thankfully, the entire family is fully vaxxed and boosted. So the governor has not yet has not tested positive and is not experiencing experiencing symptoms until the PCR test comes back. The governor is isolating in a separate area of the house. So that just goes to show you that, um, you know, the house is huge uh, because obviously if you can you can isolate in a separate area of the house, um, then your house is huge. But uh, that's what they're letting us know that that, that they're able to do. Um, but it says that uh, Whitmer will continue working with top medical experts and health professionals at the state and federal level to increase access to testing, secure additional life saving treatments like monoclonal antibodies and new Pfizer pills and always encourage every Michigander to get block, uh, get get jabbed and wear a secure mask. Um, Mark Mallory, whose home test came back positive after he became sick, is seeking confirmation for a PCR test. Both the governor and the 61 year old first gentleman are fully vaxxed and have received a booster. Michigan, like the U.S., is facing an explosive increase in, in cases fueled by the blah, blah, blah. Now, that's what's interesting. What I, I want to say, they didn't say he had the O word. The O variant is what they didn't say that he had. Now, because they're saying that that's the most prevalent, uh, you know, uh, variant exploding here in the state of Michigan. So it's interesting that they said that he didn't have that variant. But, you know, like I said, the jury is still out on that. They may come back and change the narrative and all of this different stuff because they're at luxury to do so. But what they are trying to let you know is that currently the, the what, what you want to follow is that, look, the science has changed now in the sense that it doesn't matter if you are fully jabbed and boosted. You're still getting shit. OK, but this is where I'm going off and to tell you that this is why they have to have a monopoly on the science. So this is going to go off into the article that I'm about to read to you as to show you as to why they don't want us educating each other. Because they know that niggas got common sense. Crackers don't. I'm sorry they don't. It take a while. It take bricks to fall on their head before they, oh my God, oh yeah, you know. I, because think about it. This is what I'm saying to people. People say, oh yeah, is it a color issue? We're all in the same boat. We all need to stick together. No, nigga. No, no, Blanco. Because when black people were saying that in the 50s and the 60s that your government was corrupt, that they were sitting up there, you know, doing doing uh, compulsory uh, sterilizations and vaccinations on our children and experiment on us. Oh, well, no, nah, take it easy, Negro. You need that stuff. Now when they're in your house forcing you to do an officer oh negro come back come back negro you're right we're in the same boat then nobody got time for that shit ain't nobody got time for that shit all that double dutching and shit now see this is what i'm finna tell you so i'm gonna go I'm, I'm gonna give you another article to show you exactly what's going on and why this is so profound this is from m live okay that article is from m live it says students are leaving city districts as black teachers are disappearing from classrooms. It was published on the 4th of January, 2022. Okay, so that just came out yesterday. I want to read something is like uh, you know from here. Uh, uh, read a couple, couple articles from here. I mean a, a couple paragraphs from this article. Okay, it says racial disparities are growing in the teacher workforce in Michigan as the amount of black teachers in classrooms shrinks. And students in urban city districts seek their education uh, elsewhere. The number of K through 12 black teachers in Michigan decreased by 48 percent, so almost half. From 2005 to 2015, according to a Michigan State University, Doug Pratt, director of public affairs for the Michigan Education Association, said some of this is based on the large education shortage issues Michigan has been facing due to low compensation and limited respect for the profession. Like he's like, oh, well, yeah, we don't, you know, black people more or less don't really want to go into education. No, let me tell you what black people have been saying. OK, this is from a black teacher, black woman working in the Lansing Public School District, Regina Deloach, 23, said that added microaggressions she and other colleagues of color face contribute to pushing them out of the profession. Now, it says teachers who are white make up a majority of Michigan's teachers workforce at nearly 91 percent. While black teachers account for over a little over 6%. Deloach said these microaggressions, microaggressions could be comments made about an individual's hair, nails, or makeup. While it may not fit into the traditional teacher archetype, which she sees as being a middle class suburban white woman, these features most times reflect cultural norms of one's community. Black teachers go into spaces and they still have to deal with microaggressions on top of the now declining support. And it gets to be too much for a lot of people, Deloach said. It becomes the feather 
that tips the scales. Because these crackers don't want you in control of black minds. These crackers won't. See, this is why I told y'all, just to make this long story short. Remember I was telling you, and I'm going to reiterate this, when I was going back to when black women were talking about, and black men, and we're going to settle this debate, when we're talking about why that, you know, you see almost a rush or, you know, what is pumping and, and, and pushing and promoting, uh, you know, interracial relationships because they take over your children's mind at the educational level. These white women know exactly what they're doing. They don't want no resemblance or no powerful or no woman sitting up there giving, uh, uh, you know, your child instruction apart from their mother. Because then the black man will understand, oh, okay, I can receive instruction from another black woman besides my mother and respect her. You see what I'm saying? The white woman wants to take that role. You see what I'm saying? And then, like I said, they can monopolize off their science because, see, they ain't going to question their science. They're not gonna question their own science. They're gonna teach that shit. You see what I'm saying? And then so they, you know, they, they put us in a position to where we don't have control over our children's minds. And they do that. They don't want any, they don't want diversity in, in you know in the educational uh in, in, in educational setting. They don't they don't desire that at all. And then they'll sit back and they'll say, oh yeah, you know, what, what will happen if, you know, these low income parents sat up there and decided to teach their own children? Oh, that would be a disaster. Oh, would it be? You can't teach your kid ABCs and one, two, threes. And by the time they get six or seven years old, they should have an insatiable hunger for knowledge. You see what I'm saying? Six to seven years of training, trust me, goes a long way. We have to discontinue this thinking. We have to stop allowing them to get over on us. And this might be one of many, man. You know, I'm going to continue to keep dropping a couple videos throughout the week because you guys know how I do. I pick it up sometimes three or four videos throughout the week. I mean, you know, every two or three weeks and stuff like that. And, you know, I'll, I'll try to do the best that I can do. But like I said, you know, my work schedule is tight. I wish I could do more. I want to do more. I want to be that valiant fighter for y'all. But I just don't have the time. FOS squad.